First of all, let's start talking about what masters are. In the layout area of the program, when you look at a layout, it has information as a title block at the bottom or at the side of the page. A master is a page that already has the title block attached to it. Think of it like pre-printed paper, except in the case of ARCHICAD, it's intelligent pre-printed paper. This title block can include information that is static so that it doesn't change, as well as information that is automatic. For example, the name of the page, the scale of the page, the name of the client. To create your own master, go to the Masters folder, under Layout, and right mouse click on Master. Choose New Master Layout and give it a name. In this case, we're going to create an A1 horizontal page. You'll see that by default you will end up with a blank page. This is to be expected because we haven't chosen any information to be placed on it yet. We also haven't set up the size for this page. Simply naming it A1 horizontal is not enough to decide or to determine the size of the page. We click on settings and it will bring up the information regarding this particular master. As you can see, the name the size of the page, which we can choose from this list. So any one of these sizes available, you can also make it custom sizes by typing in a manual figure. As soon as you change it, you will change it to custom. In this case, we're going to make it A1 metric. We can choose portrait or landscape for our orientation of the page. Next, we get to choose the margins on each side. These margins should work with most printers, so you shouldn't have to change this at all. Next, we can choose to have a drawing grid. First of all, a brief explanation as to what grids are. If I click on the A2 master that was previously created, we can see these numbers on the page. These numbers are watermarks and don't actually print and what they're actually doing is dividing the page up into those six areas onto the plan and when you drop a plan onto these areas they affect the way that drawing is named so when the drawing is placed on this page it will automatically be numbered according to the grid division that it is placed on let's go back to the master that we were creating and go back into settings and we'll go over how to set a grid up. First of all, click on grid for drawing IDs, choose a grid, and then choose the amount of horizontal and vertical cells on each side. On this, in this instance, we're just going to create four. Then we can choose the naming style. As you can see in the example below, it's changing the way it's numbered and where it's numbered from. We can also choose to offset a distance from the side. This will allow you to have space for your title block. In this case, we're going to offset the grid 100 millimeters from the right hand side. Next, I get to choose a grid line, except in this case, I want to hide all intersections with the drawing so that they don't affect my pages too much. Click on OK. At this point, I can now start creating my title block. We can use any of the tools that are not grayed out to create our title block. So objects, text, labels, fills, lines and arcs, these are all available for placing on our title block. Let's start by giving our title blocks some shape. I'm going to use a polyline tool and I'm going to use a rectangular shape so that I can easily create a rectangle and I simply place that next I start dividing this up into different areas this will allow me some room for a disclaimer and project and page information now for a disclaimer I might just use the same disclaimer that I used on the A2 horizontal page so I select it copy it, go back to my 
A1 page and paste it. It'll place it in the same location. I'm just going to drag it to the appropriate position and leave it. Of course I can adjust this so that it fits better. I might also want to include my logo. Once again, I'm just going to copy it from my previous page. Copy and paste. Just going to drag it over to the right position. Select it and possibly increase the size of it. Next, I can include information from using the text tool. So I'm just going to include my page layout ID. To do this, I can use auto text. To find out more about auto text, take a look at the auto text movie on this DVD. So now I choose the size of my text and click on insert auto text. Now I can choose which area I want to place information from. In this case I want to include information about this layout. I'm going to show the layout name, other information I put in. I can put in the layout ID, the subset name, and the subset ID. Subsets are folders that you can place inside your master. I'm going to place one and show you how it works. You'll see that this text remains the same here, but if I was to go to apply this master to one of these pages, I simply double click on this page, click on this tab here and choose a different master for this page. You'll see the previous page was A2 and this one is A1. So in this case I would need to reposition the drawings. If I zoom in it has automatically filled in the auto text that I've placed on the plan. Now as I mentioned before, subsets are folders that appear in this list. If I right mouse click and choose create new subset and call the subset plans, click on create, we can see I've created a plans folder. I simply, I simply drag all my sheets of paper into this folder and I have now the current page that I'm looking at is not in a folder so the information shows up as blank if I go into the subset and double click on the site plan for example and choose my new master you can see that you can see that it has automatically filled out the subset name this can be very handy in naming your pages correctly. To go back and edit my master, I simply go back to A1 Horizontal Master and place additional information in there. This will take time, so I'm going to pause the screen for a little while, finish off this master and show you the result. As you can see, I've put a lot more auto text in there. So once again, placing auto text is simply going to the text tool clicking on insert auto text and then choosing the information that you want to place on your plan. Let me just also explain quickly where this information is stored. Obviously the project name is not known by the computer until you fill it out. Same with the project number and the client's name and the street address. This information is accessible under file, info and then project info. At this point you are presented with this dialog where you can fill out this information. So let's just give this job some fictional information. I'm going to call a client Bob Smith in the description field, the project name, all of these fields are available to use on your master. As you can see, 
all this information has now propagated the auto text fields. Not only that, it doesn't just appear on this master only, it appears on any page that uses this master. So let's have a look at the masters. We can see that even on the other masters, the same information propagated those fields. A very important variable or piece of auto text to use is the scale. This is something that people like to show on their plans. So let's go back and put the scale of the page onto the master. First I'll actually start with putting some standard normal text that is static scale followed by inserting some auto text and I choose drawing from the drawing box I choose insert scale and push insert I'm just going to make that a little bit larger so that we can see it a bit easier I click outside the box at the moment it says scale 1 to something and if I go to a page using that layout now it's automatically filled that in to 1 to 100. If more drawings are placed on this plan that are not and if I go to another page using my layout you can see that it's automatically filled it out. If more drawings are placed on this plan or this page that are not at the same scale that scale will also be included in this scaling field. Notice that the page number that I first put into my master, let's go back and revisit that for a second. The layout ID, which I inserted using auto text and I chose layout ID, that information is taken from the book information. To get into that, I simply right mouse click on the book settings, on the book itself, which is the green icon at the top, click on book settings and choose the numbering system. There are two numbering systems hierarchical and use flat layout order. Using flat layout order means each page despite the fact that there might be subsets will simply be numbered chromatically one after another. Just to demonstrate if I go into that page now go to one of my pages and have a look at the number of this page it says this is page A03 because it is the third page on the list. If I need this to be page 2 I simply left mouse click on it and drag drag it up and let it go. You'll see that now the page number has automatically renumbered itself because now it shows up higher in the list. A hierarchical system works differently. It takes into account the various subsets or folders that are in your layout definitions. So if I use hierarchy, click on OK and have a look at this page here. You'll see it now uses 801.1 because this is folder number one, page number one. Let's try the next page. This is 801.2 and the third page of course, using my title block goes A01.3. The next page underneath that, because it's not in the subset and it's next down from the subset, as you can see, is simply named A02. This allows you to break up your page numbering in a very easy manner.